Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Wednesday, the 12th, or Wednesday, it is Thursday. It is Thursday, Thursday, the 12th day of August, year of our Lord, 2021. Hope you're having a pleasant evening and that this finds you well. Cooler weather is on the way, so that's a blessing. We have avoided uh, rain here. We probably need a little bit. It's looking a little bit dry out there, but we'd have, we've avoided here, right here, although they had some hail, hail well, just uh, just a couple miles to the north. Uh, we've had nothing like that here, uh, but I noticed storms all around us on the radar uh, this morning to our south and then to the north later in the day. Also, a kind of a pleasant evening uh, for those of us who live in this area. Of course, when I first moved out here, it was a famous movie, The Field of Dreams. Some of us have been up to that. Uh, bad theology in that movie, but it's still an entertaining movie. The uh, Some of you have probably been up to that place in Dyersville, Iowa. I've been to the movie site. I have a little mug where you pour hot liquids in it, and the men come out of the corn. It's pretty cool, but the White Sox are playing Yankees as I speak. Up at the Field of Dreams, you had to be an Iowa resident to get a ticket for that, I suppose, unless you uh, are relative to the players or something like that, some dignitary. It was just enjoyable to watch, especially if you're familiar with that part of the country. And it's nice to hear the announcers, who probably not are all that familiar with this part of the world, to say what a beautiful place it is. And it is. You know, the Midwest, uh, particularly cropland, open cropland, is just a magnificently beautiful place. And Iowa is, too. I Iowa, where my uh, children were born or came home to be with us. So a beautiful, beautiful place. So prayer at the close of the day. Psalm 99 will be our psalm. It's the appointed psalm for this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace of the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And I am going to sing for you the 99th Psalm. It is an uninscribed psalm, so we don't know who wrote it, we don't know the occasion, and we don't know exactly when it was written other than you know, sometime obviously before Christ was born. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who call upon his name. They called to the Lord and he answered them. In the pillar of the cloud he spoke to them. They kept his testimonies and the statutes that he gave them. O oh Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Again, that's the 99th Psalm. It is an uninscribed psalm, meaning we don't know who wrote it, who, uh, and what the circumstances were, and precisely when it was written like we had the, just shortly ago, we, just a short while ago, we had the 51st Psalm. We know precisely who wrote that and the circumstances so when it was written as well. But here we hear about the holiness of God. This It begins with this phrase, which is found in a few other Psalms, the Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. There is a God, and he reigns. 
And sometimes I, I think we don't show enough fear uh, of God. Not that we cower, because especially as God's people, he invites us in. And in, in, through the blood of Christ, we are grafted in and made heirs to the heavenly kingdom. But still, the fear of God, and particularly we see this word repeated, holy. Holy is he. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Now, I'm not going to unpack that tonight, but it's wrapped up in this concept of God's holiness. You know, the, that cherubim is the top of the Ark of the Covenant, and it's in the most holy place. But we hear repeated, verse 3, holy. We hear again in verse 5, holy is he. And then again, we hear it at the end of the psalm, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. And that's right on the heels of that last phrase of the psalm, comes on the heels, of course, of verse 8, O Lord, our God, you answered them, you are forgiving God to them. He is a forgiving God to us, and we call out to him in Christ our Lord. There's the, there's the proof of that. Now, he's also an avenger of our wrongdoing. The, as we think about the fear of the Lord and what it means to be afraid of God in the sense, you know, to understand who we are as we stand before him, you have to think about your sin. Now, I think sometimes we're in the habit of not taking our sin seriously. We are forgiven and we're joyful people. It doesn't mean we walk around sort of pinching ourselves and, you know, oh, whoa, you know. I mean, we're joyful people. But understanding what our sin costs, when we're in heaven, we will, because we'll see the slaughtered lamb. We'll see Christ our Lord. He bears those wounds in the resurrection. You know, he says to Thomas, see my hands, see my feet, put your fingers into my side. We'll see, you know, he's called the slaughtered lamb in Revelation. We'll see what our sin costs us. But in this life, I think we forget sometimes what it means to have a holy God. Now, God, you know, when we take sin lightly, we, we, that means we don't understand that concept of holiness. Now, that's a deep word, kadosh is the Hebrew word in it comes from like heaviness, greatness. Uh, it's hard to sort of get our head around in this life. But God is perfectly holy. Now what that means is that that perfect holiness of God cannot tolerate sin in its presence. It cannot. I mean, the sin represents disobedience to that holiness. It represents, we, we were created in the image of that holiness and then we rebelled against it. We fell. And you can look at your own life, I'll look at mine and find out where you know, our or anything but holy. Our thoughts are soiled with sin. Our lives then reflect that, soiled with sin. We, so this idea that we stand in the presence of a God who is perfectly holy and sin cannot exist in his presence. Throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament as well, when people have a, an encounter with God, they're terrified, with the exception of Christ, because you know, God is hidden in our flesh. I can approach him. Now, that's very important when we think about why it is we're saved and where I'm going with all of this. I'm going to Christ, of course. But this idea that God cannot tolerate sin in his presence, it just cannot, it's not that he, you know, it's not a question of, it's not even a question to ask, you know, uh, you know doesn't he or can't he bend the rules? He is perfectly holy. And in that perfect holiness, that perfect goodness, if you want to say it like that, badness, sin, disobedience, cannot exist. It cannot. It is destroyed in his presence. Destroyed. And it dies. So we die. So remember that when you come into church, when God invites you up to his altar, which he does, as Christ tells us that beautiful parable about how sit in the back, he'll call you up front. Um, meaning sit at the, the worst place in the banquet because the king will call you up and you'll be exalted for real. So that, that's really what's happening in divine service. It's not a statement of where you should sit in church. I mean, we come in as beggars, and he brings us up as guests at his great feast. But we tremble. We, you know, people in our church, thankfully so, still show reverence in church. We try to speak with hushed voices. We bow when we go across the altar. And people who are not familiar with our, our, our traditions and, and how I conduct myself, particularly around the altar, will think that's foreign. But it's a reflection of the holiness of God who is among us. You know, our understanding of that holiness of God who is among us when we worship. And our fear of that. And then the joy of knowing that in Christ we are covered. So in Christ we, we, we wear the perfect holiness of Christ. 
so we can stand in the presence of God and, and really stand with a good conscience. With, with, you know, as Paul says, it's, you know, uh, the, my conscience haunts me all the time. I'm sure he does as well. So what does he mean? It means you can stand in God without having to worry about that conscience haunting you because you are covered with the perfect righteousness of Christ. You can stand before God in that sense without fear. So it's interesting. The Lord reigns, let the people tremble. Why? Because he is holy. But at the same time, rejoice. Because he has brought you and covered with covered you with the perfect holiness of Christ. So you are now in an heir. You're brought in through Christ. You're grafted into the family of God and through the blood of Christ. And you are now an heir to everlasting life, really through the kingdom of heaven. So a beautiful psalm that reminds us of this idea of the holiness of God and and how and what we are, how we should stand before him and what we are as we do stand before him, particularly what we do, how we stand before him in Christ. All right, let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We turn back to page 294 and we pray for the assigned prayers on Thursday. So let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, hear us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, as we pray for your church scattered throughout the world, for the pastors that you have called to faithfully proclaim your word. Stop those who not only sow hatred and discord in your church, but sow the seeds of false doctrine, those who assume the office without your authority, stop those who who speak falsely in your name, who bear false witness. Shut their mouths that they may not hinder your word going out, and bless your faithful pastors that they may stand firm in these dark and latter days. Be with teachers and deaconesses and all other church workers, for our missionaries, especially for my brothers in Christ, Adam and Nicholas and and all those who are Dale and all those who serve throughout the world. Bless them and their family. Keep them safe and faithful. We pray that as we come to the end of a work week and we prepare for the reception of your gifts this weekend, that we would have a fruitful and salutary use of the Blessed Sacrament, particularly that of the Sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Be with those who are crying out to you this day, those known to us and those known only to you. We pray for Jason, for Kelly, for Len, and for all, again, who cry out to you. According to your gracious hand, place your healing hand upon them. Be with those who care for them, and all things comfort them with Christ's victory over death and their sharing in that victory through the waters of their holy baptism. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn number 525.
crown him with many crowns. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of heaven, enthroned in worlds above. Crown him the king to whom is given the wondrous name of love. Crown him with many crowns, as thrones before him fall. Crown him, ye kings, with many crowns, for he is king of all. That stands as one and five. There are five altogether in that hymn. Hymn number 525, Crown Him with Many Crowns. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a very pleasant evening. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.